What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Goodview Woodworks channel. My name is Nathan and in this video, well, we're going to go over um, something that I think is necessary, especially when you have a woodworking business, and that is what to do with scraps, what to do with cutoffs or drop, whatever you want to call it. So what I think is cool, I always recycle everything that I use and we're going to take some drop from that old yacht table and we're going to turn it into a serving board. Check it out. I hate to waste this nice piece of burl here, um, but it's only about 12 inches, maybe 13 inches by uh, 8 inches or so, 9 inches. So you can't really make a whole lot, but I think a serving tray will be nice. So what we'll do, so we'll go to our trusty Rikon bandsaw. We're going to slap on uh, a resaw blade, and then we'll cut this thing down because, as you can see, it's way too thick for a serving board. So we're going to cut it in half. All right, here we go. Check it out. All right, guys. So now that we have our blade on, we can start resawing this bad boy right here. Nice. All right, so I know you guys may not have a big bandsaw like this, but I just want to show you that there are some options to, um, instead of like throwing it away or burning it. <laughs> God bless you. So now we have two smaller boards right here that we can use for serving boards. Five, four. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, we're back. So do you remember we cut that piece of maple on the bandsaw? Um, what I didn't show you was the CNC machine that we have here at work. We went ahead and, and cut out the Hamiltons. That's for the person. That's the person's last name. Anyways, um, this cutting board, she wanted this engraved in it. And I know not everybody has a CNC machine, so I didn't uh, record that. But same principle works even if you didn't engrave anything. So what we're going to do, we're going to take <clears throat> some of our in incredible solutions, tabletop epoxy. Mix up just a little bit to fill the engraving and fill just the bottom portion of this void here uh, with ocean blue. Let me grab that real quick. Dang, I left it. Okay, we're gonna use our P1650 Ocean. Um, she wanted a dark blue, so we're gonna give her some dark blue. So we're gonna mix up not very much, probably We'll probably do about four ounces of epoxy for the letters. Uh, so I think we'll probably do a total of about eight ounces. That should be enough to fill the letters and give us a good solid uh, base here at the bottom for color. We want that depth. So we want just a little bit of color, a lot of clear on top. Let's do that. All right, now 
normally I say don't use a drill mixer when you only have a little bit, but I'm just gonna, you gotta take it really slow. So we'll put it on one and keep it slow. Okay, so remember, got our ocean blue metallic. Look how cool that is. Super sparkly. And we want, when you have just a little bit of epoxy, like we're filling the engraving, you want a lot of pigment. Because, like I said about the pond, you know, you can't see the bottom of the pond, but as soon as you put the water uh, in your hand, it looks clear. We want a lot of pigment. We don't want it to look clear. So... Right, here we go. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Got a little carried away. We'll use our squeegee or a stick to push it in. Interesting. Oh, is it not recording or something? It is, it's not letting me zoom out. All right, I'm gonna take what's left. Actually looks cool. Yeah. The blue looks really good. It does look really good. <clears throat> All right, guys. So we're gonna let this set up, um, and there's not really enough epoxy for it to float, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but then, what's left after the after this set, sets up? We mix up some casting epoxy and fill the rest guys i just wanted to share that in this point of the, at this point in the video um i had to leave and my in-laws came into town and i took a week off of work um but my good buddy justin uh, he took over and recorded some using his cell phone and so the audio quality is not as good um, but the content is still good so uh, if you made it this far i appreciate it do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Also hit the thumbs up button if you would and uh, share this video as well. But um, hang in there to the end. Um, we, this, we do have some good content here, but the, I just wanted to warn you that the audio was a little, uh, you know, makes has a lot of background noise. So uh, do your best to hang in there and uh, sorry about that. We will correct that on the next one. Thanks guys. Okay, so Nathan had to go. In, we lost power, so I don't even know if he'll use this or not, but um, I'll do what I can. So I just mixed up some um, table solutions to pour over all of this. We're going to fill all this in, cover this whole thing, and let it set up over the weekend, and then plane it down, 
and getting it looking nice and good and all that jazz. Uh, I've already mixed everything because it's hard to do that plus hold the phone. So everything's mixed. So I'm getting ready to pour. And hopefully this isn't a fail. Which it feels like it might. Anyway, here we go. Sorry if my camera skills are jacked up. I'm trying to pay attention to this. It's all at the same time. Hopefully that's enough. Blip, blip, blip. Sorry that this is all crappy Just filming here. That burl, hard to see right now, but it looks awesome. Anyway, so yes, I'm gonna torch this. Uh, use torch or heat gun, whatever your preference. And I'm gonna let it sit over the weekend. And when we come back, see what she looks like. Okay, guys, real quick update. Um, obviously, this looks different now. This is out of the mold. Um, Nathan's still not here. He's on mini vacay. Um, so I've been trying to do this, but unfortunately I don't have a stand for my phone so it can watch me do the things I've been doing. So this is what I did. Uh, it's too big to fit through our planer. So I used a hand planer to get this all the way down, get the excess you know, epoxy that we had here down and flat. Um, I did both sides and sanded it down with 220 right now uh, trued the edges on the table saw then I took a router and rounded these edges here and I'm gonna do the bottom tomorrow the battery died unfortunately um, so I'm gonna do the bottom tomorrow hit this or I'm sorry I I, I sanded this with 120 Tomorrow, I'm going to sand it with 220, round the bottom of it, and then try to put the first seal coat on tomorrow. So that's the update for now. Um, I'll try to get as much of this on camera as I can with using the one hand. Okay, so epoxy is all mixed up just a little bit. Now, you see your brush in there. I've seen this done, I'm going to try it, but ultimately I'm probably just going to go to finishing this with the squeegee. I just wanted to try the brush to see what it does. Um, Nathan prefers the squeegee. It does just a fine job. I just wanted to experiment with this brush. I've seen people do seal coats with brushes, mainly when they do live edge, obviously, because you can't really squeegee a live edge. But I just wanted to try it, see how it does, see what it, you know, whatever. But like I said, I'm probably still going to just finish it with the squeegee. So. Let's go ahead and just start getting in it.
technically I didn't really need to do it over here, I guess, right? Because this is this is sealed. It's the wood you're trying to seal. But I don't, I, don't, I don't think it makes much sense to just sit here and trace this out. You know, you, you might as well put it here too. Why not? You know. But that's looking about right. I don't know. I liked how the brush. Kind of worked. I'll still probably try it with the squeegee, see what it looks like. good reason to use squeegee over the brush is that's now done unless you clean it with an abrasive cleaner like maybe brake clean or something might be able to save that brush or uh, an acetone or a thinner maybe but for the most part the brush is going to be done it's not really multi-use this all you got to do is kind of flick the edges and get the old epoxy off if you want to and it's reusable so that's probably another benefit of using this versus the brush. So, all right, I'm gonna try to go over this a little bit with this, see how it does. Um, if I feel weird about it, I'll break the brush back out and just kind of fix whatever I don't like. But yeah, so let's see how this goes. I saw somebody in the comments in the previous video talk about how they made like a mold to catch excess epoxy or something when they're rolling it off. That's a really good idea because it does kind of hurt my feelings to see all that glorious epoxy be wasted, you know, when it can try to go put it in something else, which I've done here and there, like little molds that I had laying around. I pick some up, I fill them up, you know, just, just for the heck of it, just so it doesn't go to waste, you know, or whatever's left over in the cup, I might throw some pigment in there and uh, do something with that on the lathe or whatever. But yeah, so there you go. I'm just gonna leave this be. two more coats of this and um, then it should be ready for flip coat. Coming in late, uh, adding the second seal coat. Um, don't have another brush right now so I'm just using straight squeegee. Um, just gonna spread this around nice and thin again. Let it sit for 24 hours. And then do one more seal coat and be ready for the flip coat. Guys, thanks for watching uh, the video in its entirety. 
Um, now we left out finishing on purpose because I have a video series coming up very shortly, step by step how to do an epoxy finish, an oil finish, and a few others. So we left that out intentionally so you can go check those out. But in the meantime, uh, do me a favor and click one of the end screens here and continue watching and uh, learning more about the epoxy process. Do me a favor, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, hit it and share this video with your friends. And as always, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. And we're back. Uh, I almost dropped it. Oh, <laughs>